welcome to DMBC TV, where we bring you interviews with business men and women from around the world. My name is Gloria Pollock, and today I'm going to interview Mr. Sean Pig. He's the CEO of the company, hotels, etc. In 2005, Sean noticed an infomercial about a company that can help people to save money on travel. He called the company up and he became an authorized dealer because he immediately saw the value in the concept. He then purchased exclusive rights to several states, including Georgia, and began hiring commission only sales representatives to start selling. After selling over 100,000 in memberships the first 30 days, he discovered that the discounts did not work, which caused them to issue over 100,000 back in refunds to their clients. Once they finished refunding their customers, he called up the current owner of hotels, etc., and informed him of the situation and provided one possible solution. After months of negotiations, he finally purchased hotel, etc., in March 2006. Within 30 days of buying the company, he relaunched the company with a new look, feel, design, and most important, technology. Hello, Sean. How are you? I'm doing excellent. How about yourself today? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Fantastic. So, <laughs> let's go with the first question. Uh, what's the mission of uh, hotels, et cetera? Uh, our mission is to bring the deepest and best discounts to all of our end users and to basically be a discount king in the travel, entertainment, and coupon industry. Um, you know, there's two things guaranteed right now. People need to save money and they need to get out of their house. So that's what we want to help with. <laughs> and what's the company's vision? Our overall mission? Vision, yeah. Um, our vision is to basically um, re, uh, I guess I, I should say, revitalize and uh, restructure the entire coupon discount industry, all the way from the travel, from the, you know, online coupons, grocery coupons, um, to entertainment. It, so, and basically... And also allowing the opportunity for individuals to pay in our system of crypto as well. Mm, okay. So what benefits uh, um, does a client have? Like, what kind of benefits uh, am I going to be able to get joining your company? Oh, or being your client? Uh, being a member of hotels, et cetera? That's a great question. Uh, we have over 3 million discounts that are not available to the general public. Uh, it's hotels, cruises, car rentals, restaurants, golf, theme parks, entertainment, movies, recreation, shopping. Basically, um, you get up to 75, up to 70% off. We like to say 70%, up to 70% off the public rate. And what we do is we allow any company on earth to come into our system as long as they give us a discount that is not available to the public. So it doesn't matter if it's here in the United States or Zimbabwe or Africa or, or Ghana or Cyprus or China, or it, it could be anywhere. Uh, globally, as long as they give us a discount that's not available to the public, then we'll include that into our system. In return, as a member of hotels, et cetera, you get access to the discounts. And um, our discounts, they, our systems are just like um, Expedia or Travelocity. The technology is just the same. It's just, it just as secure and safe to use. Uh, and the only difference is, is we provide wholesale net rate, rates versus parity rates. So it's a, it's a difference in rates. Okay. Well, that's interesting. And um, as a company, how hard is it to get at that international level? As a company to an international level, it's extremely difficult. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of companies, like especially in a country of Kuwait, uh, where we had to get you know, the, the president of Kuwait, uh, the signature of the president of Kuwait, as well as the secretary of state in the United States, I think that at the time was Hillary Clinton. Um, and they also, in order to do a business in certain countries, they have to, yeah, it has to be a legal resident of that country that already has permission to do business there. So some countries are very difficult to get into and then other countries are, are not as difficult. But here's, here's, here's what um, is very unique, and people don't understand this about what we do. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, which we do, we have a discount with, let's say, um, Avis car rentals, just for an example. And let's say Avis is in 17 countries. 
Well, that means there are 17 international corporate offices. So just because we made a discount in the United States doesn't mean it's available internationally. So we had to go negotiate with every single international corporate office to, to bring those discounts to our members. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I see. It looks hard. But when you, you joined the company in, in 2005, right? Um, how hard was it uh, to become this company what it is now? It was extremely difficult. The, the company, you know, had a lot of issues because 9-11, when 9-11 happened, September 11th and airplanes with the towers, um, give me one second. I'm going to just tell me, okay. Um, when 9-11 happened, basically it busted the entire travel industry. So hotels, et cetera, went dormant and um, didn't come back, you know, basically started coming back out of the box. I think it was maybe 2004, 2005. And that's when I discovered a company and, and that's when I purchased it. And it was definitely a transition. I came from the corporate world, you know, uh, an executive corporate part of the world and, and coming from one industry to another, not knowing anybody in the industry, no contacts, no, I had to start from scratch. So it was definitely a, definitely a good challenge and, um, and a, a, a very re rewarding, as I should say. Yes. And, and you're talking about this struggle about the 9-11 and what about Kobe? COVID took a major impact, yeah. Um, and um, what was that, 2020, we unfortunately had to lay off a lot of people. Uh, but what we did is we took that time to restructure our system and to uh, make it to where we're sustainable for business over the next five years to 10 years, no matter what happens. And so we, we took that time and we, 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 um, we took advantage of that time to redevelop our, you know, our infrastructure to prepare for what could happen next year. Okay. And how many employees do you have? Uh, there's many different departments. I couldn't even tell you anymore. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know we just, I just hired like seven new executives this week. So I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, the good news is, is at one time we had hundreds and hundreds and, but the way I've restructured a company during the COVID crisis, uh, now we're able to perform at even better pace and, and, um, with the less employees. So we restructured it to be able to, to utilize the technology that's now available on the market today. Is it hard to deal with employees? Very, very, very hard. I, and I, I don't really deal with all of them. Um, I deal with just my executives, the vice presidents, you know, the CFO, COO. That I, I, I deal with the executives. And then um, the vice presidents typically, you know, manage the employees. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the admin department, I, I kind of just pop my head in there once in a while. <laughs> but not, I really don't manage the employees per se. Yes. Can you Tell us a little bit about your daily routine since you wake up until you finish your day so everybody can like kind of visualize, visualize how a, a owner, business owner, like have uh, or has his day. Or well, the, uh, the um, you know, every day is a different day. And that's what's great about being an entrepreneur and a CEO. You're not going and pushing the same button every day, doing the same stuff every day. It's a different challenge every single day. Uh, but my morning begins with the phone ringing, obviously, you know, before I can even get out of bed. And, uh, and conference calls, webinars, um, podcasts, interviews, and training with all my VPs and, and executives and um, uh, deal negotiations, uh, then also handling the technology. We, the, my my day to day operations is kind of changing right this moment because we're bringing in more you know uh, more powerful people in each department. So I don't have to you know babysit that department as I used to. Um, it's kind of freeing me up to to do what I need to do. And uh, that's like for example now we're getting ready to launch our new booking engine that has uh, that accepts crypto as payment. We're getting ready to come up with our own coin now. Uh, we're getting ready to go pre ICO. So we're gonna have our own coin now that's gonna run through our entire travel system. And uh, we've been networking, merging and acquiring many different companies. So we're, we're continuing, that's what my, I'm doing now is, is basically, um, I'm in doing like the merger and acquisition stages right now with other companies and how we can make strategic partnerships in order to continue to grow and expand that, the program. 
And let's say that I want to be your client, which I really want to be your client. <laughs> We'd love to have you. <laughs> What's the first step? Uh, well, we don't sell to consumers um, anymore. We stopped that January 1st. So I used to, be, prior to January 1st, I'd say go to hotelsetcetera.com, click on join and join it. Uh, but we don't do that anymore. We now, we, we leave that to our distributors. We have distributors all over the world. And I, that's where you go purchase your membership card at now. Um, but basically you join the program. Once you get the, once you get your membership card, you register into hotels, et cetera, and then you log in and you have access to all the benefits. Wow. That's amazing. It, it's pretty, it's pretty simple and straightforward, but the most important thing is it saves our members a lot of money. We, we save them a ton of money. Yes. And can you talk a little bit about your, uh, private, private level program? Yep, absolutely. So what we have done since we do have the deepest discounts, we're, we're, you know, we're the discount king in the, in the world. So since we have all the discounts to systems and technology, we, uh, we power other companies. So there's companies out there that would purchase our white label. We provide them what's called an API. They take that API, install it within their members area. So when somebody or, or employee benefit portal, whatever it may be, so when somebody joins that program at, you know, one of their company, that company, when they join that program and log in, that's all done with that other company. But once they hit the engines, that's where we take over behind the scenes where nobody knows, um, you know, the, the bookings, the cancellations, customer service, modifications, you know, technology, inventory, uh, everything is done behind the scenes that we power. Okay. Okay. And what's the fundraising program that you have? The fundraising program is pretty incredible. We just got finished with the um, University of Lagrange. We uh, we raised them enough money where they can buy all brand new football equipment for the players. So it was it's a great campaign. The fundraising program what we have is very unique. Um, instead of buying donuts or cookies or wrapping paper or whatever it may be, the individuals are going to donate to to their nonprofit because they want to. Um, example, you know, Lagrange University. People are going to donate to them anyways, especially if their child goes to school there. But in, in exchange, when you donate, we're going to give you a complimentary, a free annual membership card to hotels, et cetera. But you also get to go into a drawing to win a seven-day a seven vacation valued up to like $4,000. So one of the donors that donates is ultimately going to go on vacation. So it's given them an incentive to, to donate. Um, and then, of course, the more they donate, the more entries they get into that vacation. And uh, once the vacation winner is selected, that organization, like LaGrange University, they would give that winner that vacation. So it's a, it's a win-win situation for everybody. Wow, that's nice. And uh, what makes hotels, et cetera, different than the competition? Well, we really don't have competition. If, if, we, if we had to say we had competition, it would be the public OTAs, online travel agents like Expedia, Travelocity, even though they're not competition in the same sense because we're wholesale, they're retail, but because they spend billions of dollars a year in advertising, most people subconsciously think about, let's go to hotels.com or travelocity.com first. And um, instead of looking for a discount, one of the biggest, so that is our biggest competitor because of the amount of money they spend on marketing you know unfortunately i don't have them kind of pockets um to spend billion dollars a year but uh what is what's more alarming is that the fact that people the consumers out there don't understand they're not getting a discount from online travel agents all the prices are the same across the board if you go to do a, a search on kayak for a property at any given destination at a time you're going to see it searches all the the otas everybody's within a dollar a piece from each other um, and they're not, they're not familiar with, with companies like ours, mm -hmm. because we're, once again, we're trying to battle the giant, you know, that spends a billion dollars a year on marketing. Okay. And you were talking about marketing and this, uh, yeah. competition, uh, regarding marketing, which is, you say it's the strongest, uh, for any other company, but what's your strategy to sell your, um, your, to your clients? Or your well, um, distributors, we educate and train them on how to market. So, and that way, because they're a frontline on the B2C department, we're, we're focused more on B2B here. 
Um, as far as strategies, not only our reputation, our history, and my my um, my rapport I have any industry, I have a, an excellent rating because I'm upfront, honest, and transparent across the board. So I have a very good. If you do any kind of research on on us, you're going to see that there's there's no complaints. We we if there's a complaint, it kind of I, I take it to the chin, and I'm very serious about it. So I I get involved with it. If if there's one person that's upset or wants their money back, I'm getting on the phone saying, "Hey, what's wrong? Please," because I want to prevent this from happening to anybody else. Um, but the marketing strategies as, as social media marketing is very good. Um, obviously influence and marketing is very good using somebody that already has a big, um, following on social media where you can tap into their market. Um, mm. that's, that's really good. Geofencing is a, is a new way and geofencing geotargeting. It's a new way to market. Basically I could go online and let's say, let's say I want to, um, market anybody around a Hartsfield International Airport, where I can go online and anybody within a Hartsfield International Airport is going to get a push notification or phone that says, hey, save on your next airline ticket. Or, or let's say Hilton. It said there's a Hilton in Atlanta. Atlanta. Anybody within 100 feet of that door in a Hilton Atlanta will get a message saying, hey, we can save you up to 70% off this Hilton. So the, um, the geofencing is really good. Uh, direct mail marketing is really good. Um, when you're doing when you're doing marketing online, obviously autoresponders, sales funnels, um, drip campaigns, and and all that is is really good because a lot of times it takes people so many times to see a message or a company's name before they they move on a purchase. So you have to put them through a funnel and constantly dripping you know different messages to them to to make them aware and alert of of what we have to offer. Good. Well, that's interesting and kind of different. Well, now that we have to adapt to this new life, um, everything is online now. Social media is really, really important. Um, so do you think that the company is 100% adapted to the new world after COVID? Um, we, 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 uh, we have been, we are, um, we have, um, there's some things that we're still wanting to improve on. Um, for example, push notifications, um, web browser push notifications, is what we're working on now, meaning that if you're part of our program and you're driving down the road and let's say there, there's a Hardee's hypothetically speaking, I was part of our program. Well, we're going to send you a push notification, on your phone that you get a discount right there at the Hardee's. Mm -hmm. So that's called a web push notification. That's something that we're, um, we're really expanding on. Then also, um, IVR inter interactive voice response system, which allows us to reduce our customer service, you know, expense down by having, you know, artificial intelligence be able to, you know, run our I IVR. Um, so that's something we're, we're definitely doing. I think the next big trend that which we're, we're tapping into now, and we should be launching within a few weeks is, is being able to let anybody purchase anything through our system with crypto. Um, obviously you see crypto is making a lot of noise right now, and it's something that is definitely the future. So we're just going to go ahead and capitalize on that market now. Nice. So that's interesting. I'm really glad that, that you guys, um, could survive to, you know, COVID there's a lot of companies that didn't couldn't make it. Uh, no, it's, fine. It, it's just right there already. Um, I think that's it. I think that's the, the whole questions that I sent you already. And yes, well, I'm just going to say, have a good, uh, like a thing goodbye because it's, yeah, I think we're good with that. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I certainly appreciate the opportunity coming on here and speaking to you and your followers and listeners. And, um, you know, and I hope I can influence somebody. I could tell you this, that if you put the same amount of effort in your own business that you do your job, then it doesn't take much to succeed. It's it's very little to succeed to replace your job income, and that's what the world's going to now. You know, people don't want to work anymore. They don't want to go to a nine to five job. They don't want to sit in the office. They, so right now is the time for anybody to capitalize on entrepreneurship, especially with the change that's going on in the world. And and the change is not only. It's not bad, but it's good also because it's going to be changing the wealth, how people make money and who, who has the wealth. And it's an opportunity of a lifetime to be able, it's almost like if you were to, you jumped in when the internet started or when cell phones came out, yeah. um, what's happening now in, in the world is a perfect timing to, um, to get out there and kick off your own business. Yes, of course. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your words. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and Absolutely. have a good one. Thank you. You do the same. Thank you. Perfect.